You know the vibes. Another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast. Another week already. We're closing in on episode 100 next week. I'm excited. Uh, BJ Armstrong, real name, no gimmicks, alongside myself, mm. Mo Moonsi, here to break down the night's NBA action. And what a night it was. Two very one-sided games. One team will be advancing to the Commonwealth Finals, and the other one is going to be forced into a game seven. Now, BJ, where do you want to start? Do you want to start on the East Coast or the West Coast? I start on the East Coast. We got to start East. We got to start East. Now, Miami. No. Philly. The Miami Heat took apart the Philadelphia 76ers. I know they only won by nine, but the game was very, very one-sided. The 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 nine-point deficit at the end, if you didn't watch it, came from, you know, Miami basically having decided they've won the game and, and Philly scoring a few baskets at the end. But it was a very, very one-sided game. Ever since that third quarter where Miami took control, um, Philly really had no chance. They looked absolutely dead in the water. Jimmy Butler, another spectacular performance, 32 points. Philadelphia, though, BJ, I just can't figure it out. Where is James Harden? Because once again, I mean, there was a guy with a beard running around with a James Harden jersey on, but there's no way that was James Harden. 11 points, four of nine from the field, three of seven from three, no free throws, not even a free throw attempted, four turnovers, minus 16. What happened? One more, I wish I had the answers to that. And to have that answer, you and I have to be in that locker room. Now, well, we could begin to speculate, which is, it could be fun. <laughs> well, it, it began earlier today on ESPN. Amari Stoudemire, who was last season an assistant coach with the Brooklyn Nets, meaning he was an assistant coach around James Harden, said mm-hmm. he wouldn't give James Harden a max contract because he questioned his dedication to the game. Now, that's from someone who's been in that locker room. Well, not the Philly one, but the Brooklyn one. Now, I feel bad for Harden. He's had a hamstring injury that he's clearly not recovered from. But the question of his contract does remain, whether they're going to give him that extension, that max deal, where he'll be earning around 60 million five years from now, whether he's going to get it, because we all know what happens to those kind of deals, the John Walls and Russell Westbrooks of the world. If you're the Sixers and you're in this position, what do you do? Well, you you know, Mo. You know, I, I want to choose a different path because unfortunately I've been in that situation. So it's easy for me now to grab this microphone, sit here and tell you what I would do, you know, based on what I saw. But you know what, Mo, I'm not going to let myself off that easy. I'm not going to let us off that easy. Okay. Which route do you want to go? No, I want to, I want to allow our listeners and take them behind the scene so that we can all see how you have to look at this. And the decision will be so obvious. We don't even have to ha- ask that question. Mm-hmm. Okay. First things first, if you're going to have a max player, he has to do two things, Mo. We know every team in the league. Okay. See, I'm not going to just give you and give you a hot take. No, I want you to be able to check me and see if I'm saying it today, if I say it tomorrow. This is the BJ Armstrong guide to life. He needs to do two things. You need to okay. affect the bottom line, bottom line, and affect the top line, the top line. Win okay. games and in put the, fans in the seats. In the seats. I'm learning. Now. No, we all learn. Mo, Mo, there you go. There, Mo. Every executive, every owner in the league. They know that. That is the number one principle into running a business because, Mo, we know this is the business of basketball. And then there's the basketball business. The business of basketball says we have to put people in the seats. Why? Because, Mo, we share revenue with the owners. When people are there, that's called BRI, basketball-related income. 
Mm -hmm. They are partners in this business of basketball. Then there's the basketball business, which affects how much money the players can earn through salary cap. If the people are watching, the people are excited, people are talking about it like you and I, the fans are listening, the salary cap goes up, Well, TV ratings go up. Here's the problem. All of these things. No, no, hold on, Mo, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Basketball, the basketball. And then, Mo, when you win, the owners, evaluations of their team go up. So it's a win-win proposition. Now, let's give an example. LeBron James. Mm -hmm. People pay to see him. Yep. He wins the game. Except the for this evaluations season. Of the t- except for this season. <laughs> Steph Curry. Giannis. Yeah. yeah. You, get the, you, you, yeah. You, you get the gist of how this works. Now, yeah. now, let's take a look at James Harden. Is he affecting the business of basketball? The fans were booing the Sixers at okay. home in an okay. elimination game tonight. Is he affecting the basketball business? They're winning no games with him. He's vanished. Okay, then. So, Mo, it's not that I don't want to pay him. If you want to violate the principles, because, Mo, I always tell you, the most important thing of running an organization is the leadership. And when the leadership makes a mistake, it's going to affect the team and the organization for years to come. So if you are telling me that I'm looking at a max player by my principles and I, and I plug and play with the principles, Mo, he's not. Well, that leads me nicely to my next question. We're talking about the management. Okay. Doc Rivers, after the game, was asked if he's concerned about his job security. He said, nope. I've done a great job. No one expected us to be anywhere. And I have an issue with this answer because okay. after the James Harden trade, we all expected them to be in the Eastern Conference Finals. So I don't know what, who he was talking to in that they didn't have any expectations because I believe they did. Do you, if you are the management or the ownership group, bring Doc back next year? Or do you look in another direction? Maybe a coach like a Mike D'Antoni, who has proven to get the most out of James Harden previously, given that okay. Daryl Morey has clearly got a favorite player in James Harden, and they all work together as a trio in Houston for so long. So, Mo, I like to hold myself accountable. I like to hold myself accountable. And because I hold myself accountable and responsible, if I'm going to properly give my viewpoint or opinion about the game, I have to be honest in how I view the game. Okay. Now you just said something that was very profound to me. You said Mike D'Antoni gets the best out of James Harden. Okay, last time I checked, Mike D'Antoni, who was a terrific coach, what does he want? Well, nothing, because neither has James oh. Harden. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. But he gets Bingo. more than 11 points out of him. But, okay. Okay, that's fine. But Mike D'Antoni, he plays without a center. And I just saw a, a guy go out here this year who was runner-up for MVP. Yeah, and, and we do have to give some credit to Embiid because the guy's playing with four fingers, a broken face. Hey, hey, hey. hey and hey, and hey, hey, hey. he's giving more effort than the entire no, rest of the no. roster combined. Now, the rest Mo, of the team again, the night, yeah, they didn't yeah. grab no rebound. They weren't hustling. There was no this effort. This is what I'm saying. Like suitcases this, is what, this, is, this is what I'm saying. I don't have a problem with the, the running gun and the open offense and all of those things. The way Mike D'Antoni plays, I haven't seen a big thrive. Yeah, because we're not going to count Amari Stout. No, 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 really no, 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 no. He's not a post-up big. He was a four-man. He was a role finisher as well. Okay, this is what I'm... Now, again, Mo, I'm just telling you what I've seen. Mike D'Antoni is a terrific coach for that style. But just know, Mo, we haven't seen that style... Win. Okay. They've come close, but never got enough. Okay, now, this is what I... Now, Mo, I'm going to go back to my principles. You must defend... Mm Mm-hmm. 
you must rebound the ball after you have that great defensive possession and you must share the basketball. The way Mike D'Antoni coaches, it's fun. It's exciting. They get up and down. Guys are playing. But for some reason, Mo, it always fails at its moment of truth. Well, having said that, they weren't doing any of those things tonight. They got well, destroyed they, on the they board. They weren't playing T-Bone defense. Scored 99 points. Oh, yeah, because they, they were coasting through the whole fourth quarter. Uh, I, I don't – listen, I watch – I watched James Harden tonight. I, I I just kept my eye on him. You play bad. Everybody plays bad. Everybody has played bad. You know, but Mo, did you see the effort? I mean, there was it was like a was preseason just, game. He was jogging. He didn't even box out the rebound. Was, and was, and, yeah, and here's the thing as well with James Harden. We see games where he will take thirty shots in a game with no conscience. He'll shoot the rock every time he gets it. Today. How, how many shots did he attempt again today? He was, he, he, he took nine shots. He took two nine shots in the second half. Shots. Two shots in the second half. Yep. And played 40 something minutes. In the second half of this game, he absolutely disappeared. He had zero points in his last two fourth quarters. Now, it's funny because the Sixers traded Ben Simmons because he disappeared in the crucial moment in the second round last year in the fourth quarter down the stretch. But at least in Ben Simmons' last two fourth quarters with the Sixers, he scored three points, and three is more than zero. So, pff, tough spot. They replaced the guy who choked in the fourth quarter for another guy who choked in the fourth quarter. And not for the first time in the playoffs, may I add. James Harden has had it numerous times where he's left a lot to be desired in crucial, crucial games, elimination games in particular. Well, I, I, listen, let's get back to the original thing with Doc Rivers, because, you, mm. you, you know, because I get fired up. People want to fire coaches and do all these things. You know, when you start firing coaches, trading players, you know, let's think this all the way through. Like, you just don't you, you look at your group, you look at your group. That team, Mo, and you hear me say this. Mo, that team is a top-heavy team, and they don't have any depth to that group right now. Their depth is they trade they the need depth. they need their top two, three players in particular. Two out of those three have to play well, you know, and and, and those three would be Tyrese Maxey, James Harden, and. Of course, Joel Embiid. And whatever else they get from anywhere else, Tobias Harris or... The hundred million dollar man, Tobias Harris. Yeah, whatever else they get, they get. Okay? Their bench has been depleted since the trade. You know, so it's it's really a top-heavy team. Now, I know in their narratives and all of these things... But I'm I'm telling you, when I look at this, Doc Rivers is not the problem. So where do you go from here? Well, well you, you 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 have to do the right thing here, and the Which right is? thing is you have to construct a team that has talent. Yeah, we know the principles, and, but the question is the no, how. no, 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 no. Okay, okay. This is how you have to construct a team, meaning financially, you have to commit to building a team. If you give a player that's the max, if you give a player and pay him the max, that leaves you not a lot to construct the rest of the team. Hmm. Because this kid, Tyrese Maxey, is going to demand money if he went to the free market. Yes. Okay. Now, no one there that's currently in the front office okay, with the exception of Elton Brand, was there when they decided to pay Tobias Harris. Mm -hmm. So now you have to construct a team, Mo, with the following. You have to have talent. You got to have toughness. And you're going to have to have depth because if you don't have the depth and one of those players get injured or for some reason they don't play well in the series or whatever the case may be. You can't be living with DeAndre Jordan minutes again. 
okay, then Mo, you have no chance. So we can sit here and blame, but the truth be told, Mo, you can bring a coach in and he can go five out and you can have Joel in be shooting threes yeah, if that's yeah. what you want. Okay, so, you so this is things. my question though. What are the moves that Philly should make? Is it well, the, 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 the trade first move Tobias they should Harris, make? Let no, no, James Harden walk. Move, the first move, let's, let's deal with the elephant in the room. Let, here we deal with the absolute truth of what the decisions have to be made. We can get on the trade machine and start trading people. No, that's not how this, that's not how this works. You're building a team. Here's the elephant in the room. Are you paying James Harden? Because you traded him for a max player. That's the beginning and the end of what they're going to do for next season. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Now, so we, we've established that he is not any longer a max player. Okay, then. Unless he can so flip if the he's switch no longer and a return max player, to who he was in 2018. So here we go. So if he's no longer a max player, what is he worth? Is he a 20 to $25 million player? And then that will give me the extra money to go build a team? That's a solution. Is he a player that you will only say we'll play him for two years at whatever number? This will determine how they will build that team. This will determine how they will play next year. This will determine all of the things in the question. Thinking that we just going to pay James Harden and trade Tobias Harris and get back Anthony Davis and then, no, that's not how this works. Okay, so those are, that's not hard. So work. the question is, what would you do if you were in charge of Philly? What well, would the, be the first, your proposal to James Harden? My propo- my proposal with James Harden would be the following. First things, the first thing I were going to do is I'm going to take my responsibility and say, okay, James Harden did not have a training camp with us. Okay, James Harden did he even go to training camp this year? I don't think did he. When is the last time he been to training camp? It's James Harden. Okay. You know the answer. So, so my first thing is this, the James, regular season is his training camp. My, my first thing, what I would do, let's get away. Everybody go away for two or three weeks. Immediately starting tomorrow in our exit meetings, the first thing I'm going to do is get a physical on James. Why? Because I want to know where his body is really at. Mm. Okay. You now, might want to do that before he takes two weeks off. Okay, I, no, I'm going to get a physical <laughs> tomorrow. I'm getting every, and my exit physicals, my exit, I'm getting a physical. After I get the physical, you take two or three weeks off. Everything, let's say everything checks out because we, we like James Harden. We know he's a talent. If everything checks out, James, where are you mentally with this? Because what we have to have from you is to be in optimum shape. I ain't even say he got to shoot the ball well. I didn't say he's got to be a 25 point scorer. Do you have the do you still have the dedication to the game to be at its optimum shape? Because let me tell you something, Mo. Let me tell you something. I wrote this down. I wrote this down today as I was watching the game. Okay. I, I, I wrote this down. And I and I and I and I had to recall talking to coaches around the league, but I had to recall from my my talks of, of, with Coach Riley, with Pat Riley. Pat Riley has three things that every team he's ever coached will do. They are dedicated to doing the three things, no matter what. They're going to be the hardest working team. They're going to be the best conditioned team. And they're going to be the toughest team on the floor. And we saw that with Miami in the series. Okay. He didn't say he's going to have the most depth. He didn't say he was going to have the most talent. He didn't say he was going to have the best shooters. He didn't say he's going to have the best ball handlers. He said he's going to be the hardest working team. He's going to be the best conditioned team. Okay. And he's going to be the toughest team on the floor. That's the Miami Heat. If you're not those things, you have no chance to beat the Miami Heat because the best player in this series was Joel Embiid. And if you argue 
based on body of work, the second best player was could have been James Harden. Yeah, or, or but, Tyrese Maxey. But, but, or, or Tyrese Maxey. Okay? Well, Jimmy Butler has well, had a great playoffs, this. but yeah. Great. Jimmy Butler was great because Jimmy Butler was in phenomenal condition. Did you see his conditioning? Like, yeah, really It seemed like they were just... Those four, like AM, just, those four AM workouts are really paying off, and and the hey, hey, comes coffee. We need to get some drinks. of that coffee. Whatever he's drinking, we need to get that. Bowl. Oh no, trust okay? me, I need to get that. Man. <laughs> okay, now they were the hardest working team, they were the best conditioned team, and they were the toughest team in this. And they it clearly showed as you was watching watching the series. Now I'm gonna have that conversation with James, and you can show me better than you can tell me, and I'm gonna give you this summer to show me. Because without those things, we all age. Every player ages, Mo. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a problem with him losing a step. See, most guys say probably Mo. Okay, we all lose a step, but yeah. guess what, Mo? That's not an excuse not to and, adjust and the it, game. He's a great playmaker as well. You know, he can really make plays yeah. even if he okay. doesn't have that same so, play personality. But, but Mo, he wasn't the best condition. He, this wasn't his best condition year. Okay, Mo. He wasn't the hardest working. I know hard work when I see it. No. Okay. And because he physically can't give that type of effort, he can't be the toughest guy. No. So, Mo, unless he does those things, there's nothing for me to discuss. Okay. And I'm going to give you an opportunity. Now, what am I going to do? If he does it, we can talk. Okay. If he doesn't do it, then, Mo, we move on. Simple as that. So we'll wait. It's in his court. We'll wait for the offseason to continue talking about what the Sixers should do because there was a second game on last night. It was the Phoenix Suns and the Dallas Mavericks. And the Dallas Mavericks put a beating on the Phoenix Suns. A big win at home in Dallas, down 3-2 elimination game. Luka Doncic once again steps up in a crucial elimination game. And the Dallas Mavericks, they got it done as great as Luka was scoring the basketball. He finished with 33 points, 11 rebounds and 8 assists. But what stood out to me was the number of steals. The Dallas Mavericks came up with 16 steals. They forced the Phoenix Suns into 22 turnovers. They got out, they ran, they scored. They knocked down 16 three-pointers. The Phoenix Suns only knocked down six. Now, I only have one question. Hmm. Game seven, or in the words of Zaza Pachulia, game seven, baby! Who you got? This is this is anybody's game because I'm coming in hot and I'm saying Luca Magic. Okay, and I'm not I'm not mad at you for saying that. I'm not mad at you for saying that because let me tell you something. Luca's the best player on the floor. Exactly. Okay, Luca's best player on the floor. Now, that's an advantage for Dallas. The Phoenix Suns. You know, after Game Five, I felt they had something that they could go to with Luca. I thought they had him under wraps a little bit. Not that they could stop him, but they could contain him. I, I, I got to give I got to give these coaches. That's why these coaches, some of these coaches are just terrific, Mo. They really are. Yep. It just, it, it's, it's just amazing. I, I, I was even thinking about this the other day. There was like nine, ten coaches that could have won coach of the year, and I wouldn't have been mad about any of them. Yeah, I mean, some of these coaches, I mean, I mean, I know these guys make it look simple, and you're looking at Luca. This guy is making adjustments from game to game, quarter to quarter. He's just, okay, you're going to do this. I'm going to do that. He has a counter to everything you do. The guy truly is a great player. Truly. He truly is a great player. You know, the one thing Mo, all great players have in common is they play with a level of freedom. That you, you you know that you that role players don't have and that the other players don't have. Mm-hmm. Luca plays with a level of freedom, Mo, that you just you, you just have to marvel at it. I mean, he Mo, it, like he is the play. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, Mo. He is the flow. He is the rhythm. There is no bad shot. He just plays like Mo. You can't teach what he's doing. He's Cause you don't know. He probably doesn't even know what he's going to do. He probably does moves and be like, did you practice that? No, nah, I just did it. Cause I had to do it. 
you know, everybody else is practicing moves. Yeah. He's just, he's just like waiting to see what the defense does. And then he just counters it. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Mo. I, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Phoenix, but you know what, Mo? You can't allow a great player to have an opportunity to be great. And I'm going to go back to what we saw last night. If you give a great player an opportunity, that player is going to be great. Luca in a game seven, Mo, mm-hmm. will find a way to be great. Now, Phoenix, you better play 48 minutes here. You better be prepared to go 58 minutes or whatever is necessary. Because this guy, Luka Doncic, has the mentality to come in there and win one game out of four. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'm going to pick Phoenix. I I think Luka is going to figure it out because he's going to adjust. The benches are going to be short. Now, the only thing that I haven't seen on the road from this Dallas team is they're not shooting the ball on the road like they do at home. So I'm going to assume that there are different baskets in Dallas. <laughs> there yeah, are. that home cooking hits different. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So other than that, great job by Dallas. I'm excited to see what's going on. And, you know, Mo, I, it's been a long time since I've seen Chris Paul really struggle like this. Yep. He's struggling. I don't know if he's injured or if he's turned 37 and lost his powers or if the physicality of the Dorian Finney Smith and Reggie Bullock and the lengthy defenders are really bothering him. I don't know what it is. Well, I I know what it is, bro. I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay. It's Jalen Brunson. It's Reggie Bullock. It's Dorian Finney Smith. Okay. It's Frank, what a Nilika, Nilika, Nilikina. Is that even Nilikina? Okay. They, they're keeping bodies on him. They're bumping him. And he has no opportunity during the course of the game to rest. That's what's mm-hmm. wrong with him. When he switches, Luka Doncic punishes him every single time. That's what's wrong. Yeah. Now, Mo. That, that's what's wrong, isn't it? Is it what, you want to know what's wrong? That's what's wrong. So let me let me let me let me let me give you the scouting report. Let me give you the scouting report from the Dallas Mavericks locker room. We are going to involve and keep physical pressure on Chris Paul for forty-eight minutes. Yep. Okay, you have when, to. On, when he brings the ball up the court, he has a body on him. When he switches, make sure every screen you actually screen him. Yep. And they go in at him on defense as well. When whoever he's guarding, you be physical with him. Yep. And Brunson and, and Doncic are picking him out. That takes a toll on you, Mo. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know, I know this kid, Jalen Brunson. I know him. Mm-hmm. I have never seen him be this physical. I love it. Man. It's else. time to step up. Luca hitting, screening, pick him up. Now, Mo, that takes a toll on you. Mm-hmm. Okay. That takes a toll. Chris Paul, right now, Chris Paul, right now, probably needs to come off the ball. Yeah. Now, what I saw in the mode is the following. You know, I've I've seen this. I've 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 seen this philosophy over the years. When you have that type of situation, you always take the ball to your weakest defender. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Contrary to what you what you 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 want to do, you always go away from pressure. Just a little secret. So wherever the pressure is at, you always go away from the pressure. Now, there's one person on Dallas that I know is not going to pressure the ball. His name is Luka Doncic. Whoever Luka is guarding, 
we're going to allow him to bring the ball up the court to initiate the offense. Why? Because we will have no defensive pressure <laughs> he yep. brings the ball up. Okay. Yep. The you know what's amazing about the Phoenix Suns? They can't get a rhythm because Chris Paul is trying to fight the pressure. And yep, Devin but, Booker is trying to fight the pressure. But also they're they're facing like Dallas is running this Max Kleber with the five, this small ball kind of lineup with a five out on offense. But on defense, they've just gone to switching everything. And Chris Paul and Devin Booker, they excel. We talk about the mid-range and those pull-ups at the elbow. They excel when they play against bigs who are in the drop coverage. Whereas now, because they're switching everything, they're not having a chance to get into that mid-range bag that we often usually see them dominating with. Yeah, I, 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 I have no idea. I mean, listen, again, I thought they did an excellent job in game five of mixing up their coverage. You got to show Luka different, different looks. And, I, but again, it's easier to, it's easier said than done. Luca played terrific. I'm sure they will figure it out. It's a game seven. And uh, what a treat for us, Mo. So here we go. And Let's... we've got two more treats before game seven, where we'll be in the studio live on Sky Sports. Two more treats tonight. BJ, I'm going to need one word answers from you. Just one word. The first question. Milwaukee lead the series three to two. They're at home tonight for game six. Do they close out the series? Yes or no? Yes. I'm hoping you're wrong and we can get game seven. But the Golden State Warriors are also at home leading three games to two against the Memphis Grizzlies who are without John Morant, but looking great without John Morant. Do the Warriors close out the series and book their spot in the Western Conference Finals tonight? Yes. Ooh, BJ's got both series ending in six. I hope that he's wrong about the Boston Celtics and they can force a game seven. And then we'll see that on Sunday night. On Saturday night, there are no games. So I'm going to get a rare bit of sleep. If you're watching us on YouTube, hmm. you can see my eyes barely function. But it's important that we bring you this podcast. So if you do enjoy these podcasts, if you do enjoy these shows, please do share it with your friends. Let them know about the show. Get them involved. Get them listening. And leave a review, leave a rating and all that kind of good stuff. It really means a lot. Share the show on your Twitters and Instagrams, TikToks and everywhere else. We're going to be back Monday morning, bright and early, breaking down Game 7 between the Phoenix Suns and Dallas Mavericks and potentially Game 7 between the, the Boston Celtics. What is Game 7 for What is Game seven? What is Game 7 for Phoenix? Sunday? Sunday. We're in the studio. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, we're in the studio unless Boston go to game seven. Then we're covering that one in the studio. And then the Phoenix game will be at 1 a.m., I believe. Uh, but either way, we're going to be in the studio for a game seven. So, oh, so ready. Man, Lucas get a couple days to, oh, wow. Yeah, no games on Saturday night, man. No, no games on Saturday night. So we can watch some more film, review it, fill the void. But until next time, we appreciate you guys listening, rocking with us. We're coming up on episode 100. We're going to be celebrating next week. But in the meantime, have a great weekend. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Sending love to all of you, your families, and all of our listeners across the world. Until next time, get buckets.